Yes, Kyle, one of the most colorful players on the uh, the, the PBA Tour, or, well, any tour. Uh, this will be the most plain outfit he will ever wear. Uh, well, he's part of our national team uh, in, in that uniform. Uh, both these players, relative to newcomers onto the professional scene, uh, and both making big splashes early on in their career. Rafik coming over a very limited number of tournaments has already garnered, garnered a lot of a lot of attention from the rest of us. That uh, uh, you know he is a world class player, naturally right handed. Learned how to bowl left handed, and has one of the most powerful deliveries on the left side. Kyle, boy, two hand, you know what they call a two handed style now, which is becoming more and more popular, but he does it more like a one handed player. Where he doesn't have a sidestep, he actually keeps his shoulders and hips pointed towards his target and still throws the ball at a very high rate of speed. It, you have to be incredibly strong to do what he does. And uh, as someone who's given him five, I can attest that he, he doesn't lack for strength or, <laughs> or substance. I'm just a little disappointed we're not going to be able to see him in his flamboyant style. You showed me pictures, and I would have liked to see him. <laughs> Does that, does that temper some of his some of his emotions, though, when he's on? Maybe a little bit, but as you can see that afro that he carries up there, he has a pick, and if he throws an exciting strike somewhere, we're going to see that, at least that part of his... Uh, Something to look forward to, yeah. then. He needs a couple of shots to, to you know, to kind of do the right thing so he can get a little bit loose. Like, the hardest thing for all players on a TV show is is that there's a lot of tension. It's uh, it's very short. It's very rushed. It's a very different atmosphere that's unusual for any player, really, uh, but certainly for young players. And uh, and obviously, when you get to the semifinals like this, the entire bowling center is shut down, and just about everybody is just focused on these two lanes. It's shut down. It's, the lights are brighter, and the one thing that, that a bowling center never is, is silent. And so you hear so many more noises that you never hear typically when you're bowling. Both these players once again going through their five minute warm up. And you can see. Coach there, making sure that they can see the lanes. Go ahead. Yeah, I'm sorry. I can no. see, you can see watching Kyle and warm ups that he's he's watched the first match. This is something he hasn't done in the first game of any of our uh, singles, doubles, trios, or team where he's used a urethane ball from that far right. So uh, as you can see, he's, he's taking some of what happened in, in match one, and he's gonna. He's going to give it a go here. He has struggled in, in game one as well. Most of his score has come in games two, three, and four, or, or really three through six, and so uh, where his power advantage really comes into play. Well, there you can see it's an advantage. If you are playing in the second semifinal, you could actually have seen some of the balls being thrown by the previous two semifinalists, but at the same time, it might be even more of an advantage because obviously he had Andrew, the teammate here of Kyle. They do, and they can, you know, they they can work together a little bit, uh, uh, shared some information, kind of, and, the, and they have bowled together in the trios and in the team event today. So uh, it looks like both players are looking to use a urethane ball, which for a player with Kyle's power is the one way he can keep his ball from looking too much. Uh, take that urethane cover, which is less porous and has much less traction it's much slower uh, in reacting to both the oil and the dry so would you say the choice of balls from both these competitors is because of what they saw in semifinal number one well on the left there hasn't been really any other choice there's only you know if you use there's a there's been a study about the rule of 31 and you take the pattern distance minus 31 and that's approximately where your ball should exit the oil pattern which puts it right around the seventh board. And on the left, there's really been no choice. One, two, three is not hooked on, you know, with very, very rare exception on a, on a few pairs. So they've had to play like eight to like five, six, 
And then by the end, time it gets to that 38 foot point, it's parking up into seven or so. And uh, that's really been the only place they've had any success at all. And uh, and Rafik has by far been the most successful of any of the players, left-handed players in this tournament. So you can see Team USA using the same strategy here, letting the opponent go first. So Rafik Ismail. We'll go first here. I didn't see as much difference between the two lanes in practice like we saw with the other part. As it turned out, I'm not sure that there was a particular advantage in either lane, per se. Dan could strike on both of them, and Andrew struggled on both of them. Rafik starts off, leading that seven. He's a little further left than a lot of the players are. He's actually across the arrows, right around the fourth or fifth board just using sheer power to keep it keep it online from out there. Actually, I don't know that that's a react or a urethane ball either. I think that's uh, that's just his power and his and his ability to control his axis rotation to keep it from overhooking from that outside angle. Good start though, well executed shot. Bad break to leave the seventh in. There is a big delegation here from Malaysia cheering him on. As there always is in their traditional orange and black. Kyle Troop now. Just missed that one a little bit and that's just a uh, reaction to the adrenaline that's going on right now. Got a little fast, and that one didn't work. I was going to ask you, was that nerves to start things off? I think because so. pretty loose right before that. It does, but you still had a chance to sit, and then... Because uh, it looked like it was pretty well online. Ooh. Uh, Not the kind of way you want to start. Nope. That's not what he's looking for at all there. Um, he's got to have to shake that off. Got to regroup a little bit. And that will stop you from getting loose in a hurry. They're already down 11 pins in frame one. Needs to come back in a big way here. Enough pin action there. Wow. Four pin actually hit that and moved it a little bit to the left, but it did not knock it over. Watch the hit pin go to the wall. And it's actually the head pin came off the four pin and touched it at that speed, but not enough to knock it over. Not a perfect shot, but a shot that he would normally normally get the pin action to strike on that. That should have definitely been a strike. Rafik with an early opportunity here. An advantage of that could calm this youngster. Sometimes also they get overexcited. We'll see what he does here. Seeing so far, he's a pretty cool customer. Time almost days. Yeah, almost identical shot to Kyle. So another player with a very high rev rate, lots of speed, even more speed than Kyle. When he hits those little light mixers like that, it's not very often that anything survives the shrapnel moving around on the pin deck. He's looking to stay clean here. Is Rafik, and he does. We have not been on, near uh, 
Team Malaysia in any of the crosses, and so I really haven't had a chance to watch Rafiq Bowl. He's a little further left than the rest of the players and, and seems to have a little better reaction as well. So different skill set from some of the, the, the PBA guys that are here with Jesper Svensson, super high rev rate, but you know, too much rev rate to play this as direct as, as Rafiq is, and then Jacob the same with uh, not as much speed and, and way more access rotation, so struggles to play that straight. That's in the pocket, no. Oh. That's gonna be a split here. Well, this is much like what we saw with Andrew on a shot that was not perfect, but certainly not deserving of, uh, of this kind of, of result. The 6-8 with the 10 pins, basically a fast eight with the with the eight here. Again, this is an eight to one, maybe a ten to one shot at best. Well, and now Kyle with a slight advantage. Potentially would go up four pins with a strike in this frame. That will help get him a little loose. He's gotten away with a, uh, a less than stellar frame. Yes. Troop now here in lane 36. Wow. That ball was left off his hand. He's really good with touch, and this is a four two-handers are generally regarded as high power players, but not not terribly accurate. And through the ETAs we go through during our camp, he is one of the most accurate players on our team. Uh, that's a rare muse cue. I'm softer and meant to be hit more to make up for the two four five, but the miss left from there that's disastrous for him. So. Down nine in the big picture. To have two frames like that and to be still within a mark is is uh, fortunate, but I don't think he needs to give Rafik any more chances here. He needs a solid bowl here. And again. Oh, he wasn't happy with that one, you can see. Yes, he definitely missed that sweet spot. Yeah, a little out of rhythm here. Left himself another difficult make. That look says it all. Yeah, he's he just, he is a loose player. He's, he's a guy who, who thrives on high energy and, and uh, right now he's kind of feeling tied up. And this is a difficult spare. This is, you know, 50-50, even money. Trying to get right back on track. Yes, he nice. does. Excellent cover. Maybe that can get him into a rhythm of sorts. Exactly, and he will try and use whatever he can to get in there. So he's trying to chuckle a little bit. He He's finally executed a shot exactly how he wanted. Now I can see if he can turn that around. And maybe the bigger key is see if Rafik is going to give him any chance to. Really a chance to step up here and, and grab the momentum. Up nine. Oh, he missed the pocket as well. He looks a little surprised there that that didn't uh, that didn't try a little bit more than that. As high as his rev rate is, and as much surface on the ball, even in the five minutes, I believe he. He helped break the lane down even slightly there. I, like you said, I think the look says it all. And he, Kyle, he, he knew both those shots were not what he wanted. That was not the look we got from Rafik. Switch balls to something a little more aggressive, try and get it to cross over and make that. And well, we got ourselves a match. Yes, we do. Typically, we'd say a Troop is up by two pins here in the fourth frame, but. Uh, as tough as pocket shots have been to come by, uh, you know, we might just call this one even. 
<laughs> this is making it interesting now. Well, so you got a little nerves. Semifinal. Yeah, so a, a little nerves and a little bit of, of I mean, the, the shot is very difficult, and especially these first five, six, eight frames. And so, uh, and that's with doubles pairs. So it really doesn't break down to a, an easier state, probably within this first game at all. Can your feet get right back on track here? That's in the pocket. There you go. Quickly trying to consult with his coaches there. You see that right up the third board. And just, that's a strong man right there. Lots of power, lots of speed. Kyle on the other hand, trying to build in that momentum in the previous frame. <laughs> Not enough pin action coming back. Well, he doesn't see very many of those, I guarantee you, urethane or not. That, uh, that's pretty unusual for him to leave a five pin. He reverates in the uh, 550 range. They generally don't miss each other, so. He must be thinking to himself, can it get any worse? And it has been here in the first couple of frames. Yeah, I mean, there's a couple ways to look at this right now. It's like, holy cow, am I ever going to get a break? I throw good ones, I get nine. All my bad ones are, you know, are tough spares and, and tough makes. And then the other side of you look up on the scoreboard and you go, well, wait a minute, I'm up by a pin. And you bowl a lot of matches where you go, you know, spare, spare, double, spare, and, and up to a relatively good start, and, and you're already shut. You can be shut out. So True. this is a this is an opportunity. I'm sure he'd like for some things to go the other way here soon. Up by one, sixth frame. And it still doesn't go his way. You heard him there with the grunt saying, come on. Yeah, that's... Uh, you're starting to think that's about enough. <laughs> I was in strike, all right. The bad one split, well, I guess really you deserve that. But, but now the good one, you, you gonna need something good to go your way a little bit. He's gonna be calling on the bowling gods yeah. in a bit. Gotta feel like he's got a couple of good ones coming his way. This match is now even. But Rafik has a chance to go up 10 pins here with a strike. This youngster from Kuala Lumpur take advantage. Big pitch coming here. And seven stays up. Tell Similar you what, situation for us. Yeah, I, I mean, you can't you can't blame good or bad breaks on either side because both players have been penalized on on relatively good shots and they've been uh, and penalized on on relatively not as good ones. So, uh, on the spare here, we will have a dead even match through six frames, and uh, I don't think either player expected this <laughs> and so to be in this position given what all has happened it's uh, there's certainly opportunities left out there we've turned it into a four frame match now and they both know more than they did when they started and as you said it's going to be a sprint from here on in it is, and both players have hit the puck at the last two shots. So once on each lane, they said, once you see the ball do what you want it to do, now you have a, a clear path of what you're trying to accomplish. Can they get it done, though? Rafik goes first. That's in the pocket. And that's the result he was looking for. 
right, he's trying to figure out what he wants to do now. He's, he is actually not, he's a little softer handed on this left lane where it picks up on its own. And one shot went high for the 6-8 and then he's really getting after it on the right lane and making the ball pick up on that lane where it got long on him. So he can continue to go back and forth that successfully. That will be his key to success. Kyle, now a chance to step up, see if he can answer back. He doesn't miss us. That sweet spot there, not in the pocket at all. Now, and that's part of where, you, when you get into a rhythm, you're just throwing it towards you're just feeding it to where you want to. Right now, he's trying to get it to a spot, and it's it's getting in the way of his rhythm, and, and it's causing him uh, probably more errors than he saw the entire time when he bowled the singles to qualify here. What a time for it to happen here for the second seeded Kyle Troop. He needs this one just to stay as he does. Within striking distance, down three, he lost a little bit there on count, but to answer back, still in the big scheme of things, I'd say the first three bagger is probably, probably a pretty good chance of winning this. So I agree. From here on, step up, throw three good, you know, throw a good one here, and get yourself in position to, uh, at the very least, put pressure back on Rafik. Make it happen. One stands once again. This is really surprising. I thought, well, I think he liked it too. Picked up a little bit earlier that time though and didn't, didn't stay. Pin spare puts him four pins down. And Rafik is definitely in the driver's seat at this point. An opportunity to strike here, go up by 14 pins, and, and make things really difficult on Kyle. Can he put the hammer down? That's what he wants to be able to do here. At least our experience is in the U.S. This is when he, Rafik has been at his best. He has taken advantage of the opportunity and risen to the occasion when it's uh, when it's been called for. Looking for a solid one here. Wow. And the plot continues to thicken here. That's just crazy. I mean, you look at Kyle, he just can't believe that he's still in this place. He, and this shot was not off. It this couldn't have been off by more than a board. Agree. I, I, this has been a real crazy second semifinal. Well, except for Dan, they haven't looked very easy at all, but uh, uh, he's got to be licking his chops down on the other end, thinking that, boy, there's, there's nobody bowling as good as I am right now. Well, despite all the struggles, Kyle is now up by eight pins, and yet still a strike here. Trying to make it interesting, and he... Well, he gets a good swing of things that's there. That's a huge break, and that will come into play, I think, here. His max score is 182. Kyle is on a 170 pace right now, so the only way he can guarantee himself a win is a strike here in the ninth and two strikes in the tenth and three pins. So, first things first, he's just got to step up and find a way to get three of them in there. And he's just going to have to make it happen. The lanes don't look easy for either player. Can he 
finally get a break here. That's yes, he does. Shot. That's a solid strike. Nice That's going to pump him up. That was an excellent, excellent pitch there. That's just, there you go. He's trying to pump himself up a little bit. This is where, this is what he thrives in. If he can get himself into that mode. His pure shot of the match. Just a little rhythm here. Get himself to flow into one shot. He would like nothing else than to punch out. Good. Wow. Huh. Well, I thought the same as Rafik's shot. I thought that was, I think was online too, and it, and it picked up early. And, and uh, well, the situation is this. If he makes the spare, Rafik will have to throw the first strike. Two. <laughs> All right, count is still pretty important here. As hard as these lanes have been, strike here would give him 170. Retreat would have to go strike nine spare in that event to to win. Not trying to put as much pressure as he possibly can on the youngster from Malaysia. Hard to believe he's only got one strike here. And there he's got one. <laughs> Well, one more, I should say. I suppose, I suppose it was a good time for a second one, but uh, he would have liked to have one a little bit earlier. So, nonetheless, a big shot. It's one thing to have to strike when you're averaging, you know, you're, you're trying to shoot 240. It's an entirely different one when you're trying to shoot 170 or 80. Uh, tells you what kind of look he has right now. He has not struck on this lane yet this game. Needs one now to have a chance to advance. He's up to the task. Wow. That saved was a his, pressure bowl. Saved his best shot of the game for the 10th frame. But the work is not done yet. The nerves have got to be racing for this kid. Strike wins, nine spare wins. Anything less, eight spares a tie. Looking good. And he got that nine. He got the nine he needed. Just to really make things interesting, huh? Pretty good shot there, too. Sometimes these spares, while they're only 60 feet away, they seem like they're about 80 or 100. This is not automatic for a spot in the final. That was a grind. That was a pressure fact shot. No, that was a great ninth and 10th frame right there. Well, I mean, the break in the ninth, it was huge, obviously, with the, the crossover, but you still, it's only a great break if you take advantage of it, and he did do that. Well, the number one and the number two seeds, the Americans are out, so it's gonna be a battle between Seed number three from Malaysia and seed number four from Canada. There's your final score and there's your confirmation.
just one pin separating Rafik from Kyle. <laughs> what Can it get any closer match. than that? No. <laughs> Makes for good television, though. The fans were just glued to their seats here for our second semifinal.